Hello and guten Tag. My name is Martin Krausch and I'm a senior systems engineer at Broker Germany. So as usually at the beginning of my videos, I apologize for my maybe hands on there funny sounding German accent. Today I would like to introduce a technology called Power over Ethernet, PoE, and how to configure it on the corresponding IC7000 devices. Power over Ethernet eliminates the need for an electrical outlet and a dedicated undropped power supply near PoE powered Ethernet devices. With power sourcing equipment, power is consolidated and centralized in wiring closets, improving the reliability and resiliency of the network. Because PoE can provide power over existing Ethernet cables, power is continuous even during a possible power failure. PoE provides several useful features to control, prioritize and manage power precisely. There are basically two methods for delivering PoE. With mid-span, power is supplied by an intermediate power sourcing device placed between the switch and the power device itself. With the mid-span solution, power is carried over two spare pairs, which are not used by data connections, basically resulting from 100 megabit connections, where only four out of eight wires are used for data transmissions. This is also called Alternative B or Mode B. The second method is called N-Span. A power is supplied through the Ethernet ports on a power sourcing device directly. N-Span supports two modes. Alternative B or Mode B, just covered at the mid-span technology, and Alternative A or Mode A where power can be carried over the two data pairs of wires. Mode A is also supported on all i6-7000 PoE devices. There are existing two important standards for PoE devices. First standard IEEE 802.3AF is the original standard for delivering power over existing network cabling with a maximum power of 15.4 watts. Later, IEEE 802.3AT expands the standards to support higher power levels for more demanding power devices, providing up to 30 watts for PoE Plus devices and even 60 or 95 watts for high power over Ethernet devices. The X7000 series supports both standards and basically supports PoE+, whereas even the i6-7450 system supports high PoE, or PoH. The amount of power a PD receives from a power source equipment is defined by so-called power classes, which is range from class 0 to class 4. When a valid PD is detected, the brocade device performs power classification by inducing a specific voltage and measuring the current consumption of the PD. Depending on the measured current, the appropriate class is assigned to the powered device. PDs that do not support classification are assigned to class 0 by default. Before deploying PoE, it is important to calculate the power budget, which is the power a switch can assign to all connected power devices in parallel. A good starting point is to calculate the total number of end devices, the PDs, that need to be powered up by an ICX switch and divide them by the power class to which they belong. All end devices such as IP phones, access points and cameras can be treated the same way with regards to PoE. Here's an example for two floors where you have different devices consuming different amounts of watts. And for each floor you have to calculate the total power they would need to operate. And that's basically the power budget the switches have to provide in order to power on the devices. Each device will reduce the maximum power budget of a switch and so it's very important how many ports in parallel a switch can 
supply with PoE. The good news is that all Brokit ICX PoE enabled systems provide PoE class 3 in parallel on all ports, with only one exception, which is the small ICX7150 compact switch. The series ICX7250 and ICX7450 can provide even PoE plus class 4 in parallel on all ports, and the series i6-7150 can provide up to 24 ports in parallel depending on the used module. It's also worth mentioning that the Brocade i6-7450 also provides PoH or high PoE in parallel on 8 ports. When using PoE or PoE Plus and CAT5 cabling, normally it should be no problem to cover 100 meters distance between the PDs and the switch. Only if you are planning to implement PoH or high PoE, you should consider to upgrade your cabling to CAT7 to cover these 100 meters, as otherwise the distance may decrease up to 25 meters when using CAT5E cabling. We already have covered the logical link layer discovery protocol within part 2 of our small video series, but LLDP media endpoint devices is an important protocol extension to the LDP protocol, which enables a PoE switch to configure and manage connected power devices. LDP Meet provides vendor independent management of PDs so that you can implement different kind of IP telephones from different vendors, automatic deployment of network policies such as layer 2 or layer 3, quote your service policies and voice VLANs for separating voice from data traffic, um, emergency call services for IP telephony, endpoint inventory information collection so that you can have a look what kind of PD is connected to your switches or to your network, and last but not least, network troubleshooting to detect improper network policy configuration. Configuring power over Ethernet is not so complicated. First of all, you have to enter the configuration mode, and then you have to power on PoE on all ports where you have attached PoE devices. For example, I go to the port interface Ethernet uh, 1 slash 1 slash 48 and in order to power on PoE I just type in the command inline power return and that's basically all you have to do. So what else? Um, if you have an LLDP capable device, it's a good idea also to enable LLDP by typing in LLDP run. And in order to see what devices are powered on, type in the command show inline power. And here you can see that at port 1 slash 1 slash 48 there's a class 4 device powered on and uh, you've allocated 30 watts and at the moment only 3.3 watts are consumed. If you want to have a closer look what kind of device is now connected to this port, just type in show LLDP neighbors and you see it's in Brocade Ruckus access point. If you would like to see further details just type in show LDP neighbors detail and here you can see uh, the MAC address, the port identifier, system name, um, even the software version the AP is using and the IP address and so on and so on. 
And uh, this shows you how easy it is to power on Power Ethernet and to collect information about the connected PoE devices just by typing in the correct commands into the system. Alternatively, you can also configure Power Ethernet with the help of the graphical user interface. After logging in, just go to Configure and then down to Port Inline Power. Here just click on Enable Inline Power. You can also set a power limit. You don't want any power limit or a dedicated power class and a priority. And then you can select a single port or even a range of ports, for example, port 1 slash 1 slash 1 to 1 slash 1 slash 5. And just click OK. And now on these five ports, Power Ethernet is enabled. As you have learned, PE implementation of vendor A may not be the same than the implementation of vendor B, so you carefully have to look into the differences. For today, I would like to thank you for your time and say goodbye and auf Wiedersehen.